guys, welcome back to the FFP. Today, me and Rob are going to be doing a PPR Dynasty Draft, and we actually have a startup Dynasty Draft coming up soon, which makes me excited. So this will be some good practice to see, you know, what kind of talent is available. I think for mock drafts, the more advanced your scoring gets, the more important it is. If you are in a standard redraft league, there is probably not a whole lot of need to go out there and practice other than to check your ADP. But if you start getting into a keeper league, an auction league especially, or you do, you know, maybe you're doing a scoring that you haven't done before, then it becomes especially important because you simply need to just get a check and a feel for where players are going and what kind of strategies you like and what your roster ends up like. Uh, for me, something that I need to do mock drafts for is I draft running back heavy. In my first couple of mock drafts every year, I go, oh, that was too many running backs. I should have drafted another wide receiver sooner. And so then I can kind of work myself into that healthier range of drafting guys where they need to be and having a bit more of a balanced approach to my roster. I don't know how you feel about that, Rob. Anything else you want to add to this? Uh, no, I think it's important to do trends. I think uh, you can understand where guys are. I think the key in you know drafting fantasy is not just taking guys of value, but understand where they can fluctuate. If you have a sleeper pick, um, maybe you've got this guy that you feel really strong is going to have an amazing year. You know, you don't take him in the second round. You're going to see how far can I let this guy fall and then still get him and you build my team in other areas. So I think understanding trends and tendencies is really important um, out there. Don't underestimate the value of mock drafts. I also think my favorite part about the mock draft is just arguing about guys. Put a couple of guys out there and then we just start talking about our opinions. Yeah. I think it's fun. Um, and then the last thing before we get into it is make sure to go check out our website. We just posted some cool research tools up there. Um, in fact, I'll even insert a clip here for you guys to see some of the stuff that we've got available. If you, uh, if you are listening to this on podcast, obviously you won't see what I'm talking about right now, but you can go check out the website. Link will be in the description. Um, and maybe finally, we should clarify uh, some of this. Yes. Again, just go over some of the scoring and everything like that. It'll be one quarterback, two running backs, three wideouts, a tight end, a kicker, and a defense, plus five bench spots. This course is going to be a snake draft. And then again, PPR and Dynasty. Um, so again, that'll be really fun to just see. I'm always really curious, right, is that balance between do I draft a player who's good now or do I try to take chances on guys who are better in the future? And, and that's always curious to see that philosophy from different teams. All right, so here we are. I'm just going to hit start on the draft. Looks like we have the seventh pick, and I um, guess we'll just evaluate what our options are when we get there. Christian McCaffrey, then Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, and Alvin Kamara all go off the board. Um, still some options there, but heavy at running back, so I hate to see nobody reach down a wide receiver. What are you looking at there? What do you like? Yeah, there's a couple things I want to talk about before I get into actual player conversations. Um, now, we're doing this like it's your first year in a dynasty league, but typically that's not going to be the case. You're carrying mm -hmm. guys over. A couple things you need to consider when you do that. One, um, like last year, we're in a dynasty league. You keep five players, so your first pick um, in the first round of the draft was Miles Sanders. Mm -hmm. And that can be confusing, but you have to consider it. He's actually not a first-round pick. According to that standard, it's really a six-round pick, so you got to factor that or reason that in. The other thing I think is key here for me is I used to draft based on need. Mm -hmm. And what changed that for me is back in the 90s, I was a guy that, like, you go into the NFL draft, um, very much like fantasy, in a dynasty league, you have needs, right? Mm -hmm. um, but now I, I believe that, you know what, you draft best talent available. And you know what changed that for me? Randy um, Moss. Randy Moss did. We didn't need Randy Moss, and we got Randy Moss, and I thought, what a wasted pick. We need other areas. And then they did it again when they got Adrian Peterson. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true of fantasy. I think that it's great to think, okay, I had a good team, I've got good wide receivers, I'm carrying over from the year before. But I think it's going to always come down to you just got to take the best talent available out there, honestly. I don't know if you agree with that or not. No, I 100% do agree with that. Here's my question for you. Does that mean that you're saying, are you suggesting we don't go running back? Well, you know, I think you got to go best talent available. And right now, here's where we're at. So uh, we got Nick Chubb. I like Nick Chubb that's out there, some other good backs. He's an amazing pure running back, but it is PPR mm -hmm. league. And with Kareem Hunt there, it brings down his value. Uh, we're going to flop around pretty quickly. I almost feel like... I wanted to show up a great running back, but I almost feel like uh, we need to maybe look at a wide receiver simply because where we're at. And I think it'll come back around and we can probably get one of those running backs that's kind of in that next tier group, but I don't know what your take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, being in a dynasty, you have to ask yourself, are you, you know, how much are you going to go win now or win for the future? Um, there's still a guy like Najee Harris out there who's yeah. a risk. He could possibly be there uh, when we come back around, but I'll be honest with you, I sort of doubt it. Yeah. Um, uh, but let's look at the wide receivers. I just want to see what's even available at this point. Um, 
And of course, age is a big factor here, knowing how old these guys are. Do you like any of those guys there? Adams is great. Justin Jefferson would be fun to take. So would Tyreek Hill. But it's tough. None of them really stand out to me. And and I would love to be a few picks early and grab Alvin Kamara or Jonathan Taylor or a lot of those guys. Or I'd even prefer to be a few picks later. Because I feel like maybe the seventh pick is almost the worst pick to have at this point. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tough there. Uh, so you look, the best wide receiver available out there right now is... Uh, you know, Devonta Adams. Mm-hmm. You know, he's 28 years old, um, so he's still got a few years ahead of him, but it is a dynasty league. Uh, you go with Justin Jefferson, who's really young, but you're also talking about uh, he's only had one year, so he doesn't have a big yeah. resume. There's a little risk there, but uh, I like him. Um, what do you take? What do you do? And uh, and so for me, where are some other guys out there? Tyreek Hill, still decently young. Um, it's hard to say. What are you leaning towards? I don't know. There's even there's tight ends available, too, Yeah. right? Um, so I, I don't know, and I, I do want to. I don't want to take forever on this pick. I'm tempted to to go with my strategy, and maybe this is too. I if it were me, I might take Zeke Elliott, which sounds really weird, but he's still young enough at his age to to have two, three, four more years. Which in in fantasy football term, you have no idea what your roster is going to look like four years from now. So he's 26 years old. You know, 26, 27, 28, maybe 29. So you can have four years there. He's a very good back, obviously. I'm laughing because you've kind of had a, a mad crush on him. You've been really big into Ezekiel. I have been. I think been he's underrated. Big. So I do think he's underrated. It looks yeah. like he's even lost some weight, did the Ray Lewis thing that can extend your career yeah. a bit. Yeah. He does have some mileage on there, though. I mean, this guy's been he in the back a few it's years. definitely so. a concern. Um, but here's the other thing. It is a dynasty league, and you want to take the future, but you don't want to think so far into the future that you you know lose this year. Oh, yeah. Um, I've seen that in countless leagues where – uh, there's a team who always has the best young talent and never even you know struggles to make the yes. playoffs. It's like, well, you, you just got to, at some point, you just got to kind of go all in and take your championship now. So I think Ezekiel Elliott gives us the best opportunity to uh, not have some years in the future, but to win right now. Mm-hmm. And I think he's very underrated. I think there's a lot of things you've said in other videos why he's going to have a good year. Uh, he's got good hands in his PPR league. I think that's a safe play. I think it's a solid pick. Mm-hmm. And I'll just say one more thing because I don't want to take too long this pick, but... Uh, the last thing that I would say for me really confirms Zeke Elliott in this selection would be that um, when Dak Prescott was there, he had 23 catches in five games. That was second only to Alvin Kamara. So again, we are, you know, despite what people think about Zeke, he is a PPR guy who can get those numbers. So it does also fall into the know your scoring thing. And I wanted to clarify that because most people don't see him as a back who can catch. But uh, why don't we make that selection? And I'm kind of nervous to see what's going to come back around. But right after we went, a bit of a wide receiver run there. Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, and Justin Jefferson. Then to finish out the first round was Nick Chubb and Pat Mahomes. We get into the second round with D.K. Metcalf, Devontae Adams, and DeAndre Swift, followed by Stephon Diggs and J.K. Dobbins. And then we are back up. And sure enough, there's still a lot of running backs out there. So, you know, maybe it would have been the right call to go with Let's go with the wide receiver, especially after that run. But I have to feel like I'm pretty happy with, do we target another running back? Najee Harris is out there, Antonio Gibson, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. There's a lot of options. Yeah, there are. Let's take a look at the wide receiver and see who's out there, too. It's always good. Never never make assumptions. Always look and see who's there just in case you never know. So go with DeAndre Hopkins. You know, DeAndre Hopkins, by the way, is a stud. Calvin Ridley's a stud. Uh, I like Terry McLaurin. I mean, there, there's actually a lot of good receivers out there, but those other running backs, too, are pretty solid. They are pretty I mean, this, solid. This is, to me, this is a lot tougher now than it was a previous pick, mm-hmm. honestly. But uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these guys. Hopkins, where he's at. There we go. Uh, I'm trying to – I've never I've – never, I'm trying to get this to pull up, but uh, – Look at Hopkins at 29. So, there we um, go. It's getting a bit old yeah, for me. Yeah, he's a guy that gives you an opportunity to win this year. Mm-hmm. But there's other guys out there that are, are also really good, and they're so young. And it's, it's the inaugural draft for us, I guess, in this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I look at Calvin Ridley. I don't know. I mean, I like the guy. I just, I've got some apprehension there, too. Yeah. See, for me, I think that you want to lose these leagues, typically speaking, in your running backs. Mm-hmm. And there's enough young running backs out there. You know, Gibson looked really good last year. And, of course, you got to love the situation that um, – Edwards is in, mm-hmm. and then for Kansas City. So um, I'm leaning towards running back. And once again, uh, it's PPR league, and we're going to be kind of tight for wide receivers. But to me, that seems to be the one position where you can find sleepers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So taking a look at the running backs, there are so many options. Even David Montgomery down there, or may not like him this year, but Miles Sanders, if they you know continue to figure out that offense and get back at it. Uh, I actually, you know, if we picked a wideout, I'd love C.D. Lamb. Through the first five games with Dak, he was 11th in fantasy scoring. That was his first five games in the NFL. He was right up there with Justin Jefferson. 
So that could be a steal. But, you know, again, looking at those running backs, I wonder if one more that I like is going to fall to us. Do we take the tight end? So, uh, you know, this is a league where you have to have a tight end. And right now, you know, that's the one position that's very thin. Mm -hmm. And so Travis Kelsey is hands down uh, the best one there. Mm -hmm. Some other good guys. It falls off pretty quickly. The only problem with it is that, you know, Kelsey's not young. Um, mm -hmm. He's got a few years left, obviously, but he's not a young player there. And, uh, and I really want to show up, you know, my running backs uh, for the future, especially Ezekiel Elliott, once again. Still pretty young, but does have some miles on him. So I'm, I'm leaning towards running back. Okay. And then uh, go maybe with the younger tight end. We'll see who flops around. All right, so who's your back there? Who do you like? Do we gamble on Najee Harris? There's huge upside, and I kind of like that, but it does feel real risky. It does feel risky. I love the things that they're talking about. His work ethic, his attitude. It seems like he's in a great fit. He's the guy there. Mm -hmm. But Gibson looked really good last year. And, and the, probably the guy that's got the best opportunity is Edwards Hilaire um, yeah. on a great team. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so I'm leaning towards Gibson, I think, and Hilaire. I think they're safer plays for me. I like Harris, but those guys have been in, and we got to see a little bit of what they do last year. Okay. Um, so of the two, do you lean a, a away? I definitely lean away, and I'm going to lean Clyde Hilaire Edwards away. I love Antonio Gibson. In fact, we're about to post our um, Players to Avoid video, and I put Antonio Gibson in that video because I love Antonio Gibson. But with J.D. McKissick there, who had 80 catches last year, there, you know, and then they add Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel had 41 carries as well for the Panthers. I definitely just wonder about volume and whether or not he can continue that efficiency in finding the end zone. So I'm going to lean Edward, uh, Clyde Edward Hilaire, uh, take him. And I just like that offense and his ability to score touchdowns based off of how many opportunities he'll see in the red zone. Uh, so after we went, Aaron Jones, Najee Harris, Calvin Ridley, and then some tight ends, Kittle and Kelsey, followed by Gibson, Joe Mixon, and Josh Allen. Then Jamar Chase, DeAndre Hopkins, and Austin Eckler. And then finally, Darren Waller went. First of all, I just want to say, who took Jamar Chase before DeAndre Hopkins? I mean, it seems like there's always a guy in your draft like that, but that seems a little crazy to me. Um, so we got two of our running backs, and I do really like them. Definitely time now to go take a wide out. Yeah, so to me, it's, uh, you know, Michael Thomas is still young, and I think he's very talented, but he's coming off some injuries. CD Lamb looked really good. It is a dynasty league. It seems to me like that's the obvious one. Let's just take a look at tight ends for a second, though. Okay. Um, you know, to me, Kyle Pitts is the guy that he's unproven, but he seems like he's got such a high ceiling that if he comes back around, do we grab it? Because, you know, the three top tight ends are gone. Mm -hmm. I don't take him now. I think it's way too early to take Pitts uh, mm -hmm. in that position. But uh, uh, anybody else out there that really strikes you? Probably. Yeah, I see a few guys there. So okay. Kyle Pitts is you got your huge upside guy. You got Mark Andrews, who I really like Mark Andrews. He's got inconsistency from week to week, but he's a, he was productive last year, so I know people were kind of thrown off by him, but he was still a top five tight end. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, super underrated, by the way. He actually That's finished third in receiving yards among tight ends. Former first-round pick. Former first-round pick. Yep. Uh, he's a guy who, in a PPR league, he's going to see probably 80 catches and close to you know, 800, 900 yards, so you may not love him, but... But I definitely think he is doable there. And there are still so many guys, like, if we happen to not get a phenomenal tight end, whatever, we'll take a shot on a Nerve Smith who's a sleeper and some options like that. I really want to go wide out here. Yeah, you know, CD Lamb makes me a little nervous because uh, there are two other good wide receivers there. But to me, as far as talent and upside, being the best talent available, he's got to be the guy. Um, so I should know this. I'm supposed to be, like, you know, one of the fantasy guys. How old is Allen Robinson? Is he young enough that he's still, a, you know, a viable dynasty guy, or are we worried about his age? No, and he's, like he's not. Uh, I think he's, like, 28. Um, but uh, when you look at this, he's definitely not old, but he's not young. And so uh, you have to be careful, too, because you think so far ahead, like I said, he's a guy who, okay, he's 27 years old. He'll be 28 when the year starts because he's got his birthday in August. Okay. I'm um, at 28, a wide receiver. A guy's got four or five years, which is decent. Um, and you could overlook that because you're thinking, man, I want a younger guy that can have for the next 10 years. But mm -hmm. tell you what, five years of high production, you know, Allen Robinson's really good. Mm -hmm. um, definitely more proven resume. Do you go that route? Are you leaning towards him over C.D. Lamb? I think I am. Again, I love C.D. Lamb, but you got to take, I, I say you got to take the safe option, but Allen Robinson should not be marked as the safe option. This is a guy who is a top six PPR talent based off of his volume and his usage and his, you know, really got a solid number one role there. So this is where I understand the trends is so important, okay? Um, here's what we have to figure out. I, I, C.D. Lamb won't be there when we come back around, mm -hmm. okay? A young player, Dynasty League, he's going to be gone for sure. We can grab mm -hmm. him now. There right. is a chance that Robinson could flop back around, but we don't know. This is where you roll the dice, you come up Ooh. big, or you could strike out. So that's where you got to kind of, this is where it helps to do these because now mm -hmm. you can learn tendencies and take that into your actual draft. 
So what do you think? Is there a chance that Robinson comes back around to us? I like, I love that idea. You want to experiment with take CD Lamb and then see if he comes back? Yeah, let's let's see. All right, let's do that. Let's CD. <laughs> that was awful. Um, right after that, Kyler Murray goes, followed by Terry McLaurin and Allen Robinson. So now we know. Uh, and then Kyle Pitts finishes out the third round. Then Michael Thomas, Chris Godwin. Uh, and then you see some running backs there. David Montgomery, Miles Sanders, Namari Cooper, and we are up again. And yet still, there are more wide receiving options. Mike Evans is out there. DJ Moore is out there. And Keenan Allen is out there. So there's still a lot of options. And we do have a lot of young talent as well. So Yeah, let's take the running backs and tight ends too. It's always good to go over that. And we haven't looked at quarterbacks yet. If you've never followed us, we feel strongly that quarterbacks are one position where you can get value. There's more production than ever. We did a huge metric breakdown on this. Mm -hmm. Once again, don't overpay for a quarterback, okay? Absolutely. First off, the tight ends, boom, still there. Basically, all of them except Kyle Pitts, Andrews, TJ Hawkinson, even Noah Fant is there. Um, I don't know if you feel like you want to target any of those guys no, right you now. You know, I think it fell kind of they're, they're the category. They're not, there's not a lot of difference between where they're at now as far as tiers go. Mm -hmm. um, I like Andrews, but, I mean, I do think he's handcuffed by uh, Lamar Jackson, who's an amazing athlete but not a great quarterback. So mm -hmm. I just I think we can get anywhere, though, and I'm going to be okay with that. So let's wait on that. Uh, hopping back to the running backs, I mean, we're kind of at that point where you know, it's going to get dry and there's not going to be many options, um, especially seeing three teams ahead of us before we pick again who will pick twice that are, you know, only have one running back. They're going to take their second and possibly their third. Um, do you see any guys here that are a must take at this spot? You know, I, I like actually Cam Akers, but now he's injured, so yeah. you're not going to. But he's a guy that you could sneak in your draft, maybe throw him on your bench later on. There's nobody that strikes me as like, that guy's going to have an amazing year. There's some talent there, obviously, but I think there's still more talent at wide receiver, and since we already have two solid backs that are uh, pretty young, mm -hmm. I think we should look at wide receiver. Absolutely. So, again, bouncing back to the wideouts. Um, again, what about you know Keenan Allen? He's got that reputation of being an injury-prone guy, but from 2017, 18, and 2019, he played three full seasons of 16 games, and then last year he missed two games, but... One of them was due to the, I believe it was the COVID protocol and everything going on there. And he's, of course, I mean, just absolute PPR stud. He's getting a little bit old, but if we could get, say, two years out of him, is that worth the fourth rounder? Yeah, I mean, he's a PPR stud. I like the guy. He's 29 years old, so he's not young, but he's got a few years left. But the one thing that I think about DJ Moore, a former first-round pick, he's been solid. This guy's produced in the league in situations where he hasn't had great quarterbacks. Um, and I think he's the guy that, that I'm leaning towards. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, I totally agree. There's some concern there with, you know, what is Sam Darnold? What is his quarterback situation? But the loss of Curtis Samuel is great because he's got uh, Robbie Anderson across from him. He's not going to see a lot of double teams. They've got Christian McCaffrey. I think that offense can be productive. It is, it is simply a question of, like, how do you feel that offense is going to go? So in saying that, you're saying you feel like Sam Darnold may not be, you know, a franchise QB, but he can at least produce fantasy numbers? Yeah, I think Moore's got more upside. You know, he's a young guy. He's put up back-to-back 1,000 yards receiving. Uh, so I, I think he's the guy that's, uh, to me, got the, the most upside. Once again, it, it's tough because this is your inaugural year of Dynasty. So are you playing to win now, or are you looking to the future? And obviously, ideally, you'd like to do both. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel like DJ Moore is probably the better long-term pick. Okay, let's go for it and take DJ Moore. And as always, really curious to see what's left for us coming back around. There goes Lamar Jackson, followed by Travis Etienne, Keenan Allen, Dak Prescott, Cam Akers, and Mark Andrews to finish out the fourth round. Uh, then in the fifth, it goes Mike Evans, Brandon Ayuk, Carson, Kareem Hunt, Cooper Cup, and T. Higgins. And we are back up again. Um, let's take a look at the, the tight ends first. Um, TJ Hawkinson's out there. For me, he does separate himself from the rest of the pack, and he is young, but I don't love his quarterback situation, and that's a concern. Yeah. Um, as far as the running backs go, there's a few guys there, and it would be nice to get a, a solid bench back if we wanted to play it safe, play it for now. Would the right choice, if you like, be to take Miles Gaskins and lock up your RB3? You've got injury protection, and you've got bye week protection, and you're always going to have a back out there that's solid. Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. I've looked at Tim. Uh, long term, he's not going to be the quarterback for Miami. I think he's a stopgap maybe this year, next year at the most. Uh, he's not young, but he's not old. Um, and we already have two starting running backs. We, we still need to fill wide receiver slot, our tight ends. And we should probably take a look at quarterbacks. Once again, we stay away from it, but it's always good to look and see. Um, I lean more towards finding talent in another area. 
Um, that's my take. I hate to draft now when I still see some wide receivers out there that I think are really good starters. Mm -hmm. So let's check quarterbacks first. A lot of them have gone. What is that? Five quarterbacks so far. That for me already is already telling me that I'm not going to take one. But there are some options out there still. Herbert was good. Russell Wilson and even Deshaun Watson down there. If, if for some reason you show up to your draft and by that day you know for sure he's going to be playing in the league. I've seen it where news breaks on a guy right when you get to your draft and you're the only one who knows and it's like just falls into that perfect ADP for you. But um, He's got so much upside. I tell you what, that he's a guy. I never waste a bench spot on a backup quarterback. I mm -hmm. will not do that. Yeah. But I tell you what, I would with him. Mm -hmm. If you get to the draft and he falls that far, you know, uh, he's a guy that it's worth definitely taking a shot at because he is that talented. Yeah, absolutely. And man, you know, there are still so many wide receivers out there. I was looking at the top here and I said, you know, Devonta Smith and Jerry Judy, and you know it's it's not great, but I scroll down a little bit again, and it's always something for you to remember if you got these online drafts. Like there's a lot of guys further down there. Adam Thielen and Tyler Lockett are still out there. Those are really solid guys to be taken in the fifth round. Okay, so here's where I'm I'm looking at this. I, there's a lot of wide receivers I like out there. I like Chase Claypool. I got a lot of upside, but there's a lot of talent. We take him now. We basically have all of our wide receivers. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's enough that we can let it go. I'll go back to what you said. You have started tight end, and Hawkinson's probably got the most potential. He's mm -hmm. solid, and, and that might be a better play because I think it's going to come back around, and we can still grab another very good wide receiver. Yeah, let's go for it. We'll take Hawkinson, lock up our tight end, and he really is an underrated tight end. I don't think he's necessarily got the potential to be Travis Kelsey, but, man, He's definitely got some upside, and we'll see volume in that offense. So after we went, it was Devonta Smith, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, followed by Miles Gaskin and Javonta Williams to finish out that round. In round six, it's Julio, Kenny Galladay, DJ Chark, Jalen Waddle, and Robert Woods, and we are up. So here's what's funny. Bit big receiver run there. A lot of wideouts went. Come look at the wide receivers. Adam Thielen's still out there. Tyler Lockett's still out there. Juju Smith-Schuster is still out there. It's crazy to see that there was what... Um, Six tight end or six wide receivers taken after that, and there's still a lot of options. So, do you want stability or do you want upside at this point? Because that's what I see guys there that are, are solid guys. Tyler Lockett's a guy that's very safe, very underrated. You know what you get with him, and he's going to be very good. For mm -hmm. number three wide receiver, man, he'd be set. Mm -hmm. um, but he does have a limited ceiling compared to like a Chase Claypool, who probably has not as much stability, a lower floor, but his ceiling's a lot higher. That guy's got a lot of skills. So, what are you looking at here? Well, you know, and I'm, this is going to sound a little strange, but looking at this, I'm, I'm also kind of saying, like, do we need a wide receiver? There are a lot of teams ahead of us that still need a lot of wideouts. So there's going to be another run, and a lot of talent's going to go. But we, I even scroll down and see, like, Brandon Cooks is still out there. Yeah. And if Deshaun Watson plays, Brandon Cooks is going to get you 80 catches and 1,100 yards. Like, that's, and he's going to fall to us based off of what I'm seeing. And we've learned looking at that the average draft position right now of Cooks has left him as is, is being drafted outside of starting wide receiver three, which is insane. He's being taken as like a wide out five, which is crazy because yes. in my mind, he's got the upside to be a low end wide out two. Just by volume alone, playing for a bad team, Texas and will be playing behind a lot. So, yeah, it's confusing, but he's a guy that could fall there. So, um, what else are you looking at then? Running backs, do you try to grab a guy there? Yeah, do we try to lock up a running back? Gaskins went, so that's, you know, that's unfortunate. But hey, we're in a PPR league and you got Mike Davis out there. He's a guy who could get a lot of catches and have a big role. Yeah. And so for me, he's another guy that uh, we do have two starting backs. That's not the long-term answer for Lionel. We know that. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to have a good year this year, but mm -hmm. that's not the guy they're going to roll with. One, he's not young anymore. He's been a journeyman who's been around. Mm -hmm. I look at uh, James Robinson. Had a great year last year, but the, then they drafted a rookie running back there. Mm -hmm. um, Chase Edward, or Edmonds, whatever. Um, he's not going to be the guy there. So mm -hmm. to me, these guys are some solid players there that are good. Um, you know, do you roll that James, uh, James Conner? I mean, he, is he the guy? I don't know. Yeah. Um, none of them grabs a hold of it and tells me, like, yeah, he's going to be the guy. He's a starter. So mm -hmm. you look at a backup. To me, I still want to grab because I want to win this year. Yeah. I want to win next year and the year after, but I want to win this year, and I want to have a good wide receiver three. Okay. Um, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm leaning. I love that. I totally agree. Who's your pick here? I don't know who you're leaning towards. You tell me first. I don't know. I lean towards Tyler Lockett as my kind of first thought. Now, I, I struggle with that a little bit because DK Metcalf is the guy. But after that, it's definitely Lockett. You've got an offense and a quarterback and it, just a team as a whole that can, we've seen they can produce volume for these guys. They got a little pass heavy last year, but they don't need to be as insane as they were the first half of the year. They just have to be somewhere in the middle of their two Seahawks that we saw. Um, I definitely see the opportunity for him. Again, not long-term option, but to buy us two years, help us win some championships and, and more of the short run. What do you think? 
Okay, so here's where I'm at with it. Uh, uh, I'd like to go with like Chase Claypool. I love his upside. But here's the thing. Our first two court wide receivers we take, and then we got Lamb. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lamb's look great, but he's still, you know, he's a second-year player. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't have a huge resume. We got uh, more got questions at quarterback, question marks at quarterback. Mm-hmm. And so they're not locks. They're not guys that you can say, man, they're just going to be solid. We're never going to produce. We think they're going to, okay? Mm-hmm. But I feel like I'm leaning towards somebody a little more safe right here. And then if we want to take some guys on our bench, use the bench spots for guys that have higher ceilings that have potential. Mm-hmm. And so I think based on our prior wide receivers we drafted, I think Lockett's the way to go. Okay, well let's put Lockett on the on the roster then. And, and what do you what do you think of our team so far? Do you want to cover who we've drafted at this point? Yeah, so we got Elliott at running backs and Chase Edwards. We locked it up right away. Two good running backs there. We think we have so, you know some solid play and some you know future. Some guys with some upside. Mm-hmm. With Lamb, Moore, and Lockett as our wide receivers and. Uh, you know, I think they're very solid there. Once again, I always have to keep in mind, because I look at the roster, I'm like, ah, it's good, but it could be better. But once again, the thing you have to remember is this is a what? Dynasty. It's a dynasty league. So you got to think bigger picture. you got to expand your view a little bit. And then Hawkinson. So I think I love what we have there. I think we have mm-hmm. some talent, but even more than that, I love the future of these guys. Not only this year, but years two, three, and four afterwards. So I feel pretty good about that. How are you feeling? No, I do. I also feel really good about it. And as with anything... I feel good about it now, but my opinion's going to change at the end of the draft because your draft is really determined by the last few rounds and whether or not you're able to squeeze some talent out of those picks. Um, so let's look at the running backs now um, and the wide receivers and just see, like, where are there any young guys that stand out to you? Okay, so I look at the running backs there. Mike Davis is solid, not young. Uh, A.J. Dillon's going to need an injury there. Melvin Gordon, a decent guy, but they drafted a rookie there, so we don't know how that's going to shake itself out. Damian Harris actually... It's always scary to go with a New England running back. Mm-hmm. But he looked good last year. His yards per carry was over five. They like the guy. I think he's going to be the man there. But I don't think he has great hands. Um, so I think he's got potential. I think there's some guy that has some PP specialist, PPR specialist there, running back-wise mm-hmm. you could grab. Yeah. But uh, there's nobody that pops out that I'm thinking, man, I just really want to roll with this guy. He, he's the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you like out there right now? You know, looking at like a Daryl Henderson for this year, again, that's not the long term pick, but that you know another guy. If you were gonna play it more conservative, if we have to take a long term pick, if you want to take a flyer, now would be the time to take Trey Sermon, a guy who he's gonna be playing for the 49ers. They constantly produce running backs. He seems very talented. They seem very confident in his talent. There is one hurdle in his way, and that's the other running backs in that offense. But at least those other running backs have proven their inability to stay healthy. Yeah. This is a risk for a reason. This is going to be all or nothing. I'm either going to love that I took him, or he won't even be on my roster at the end of the season. That's really how I feel about his fantasy value for us and how we're taking him. Yeah, can we look at the wide receiver series out there too? Yeah, of course. So come back to the wideouts. Um, guys like Michael Pittman or Will Fuller still out there. Again, like we talked about, Brandon Cooks is still out there. So is Marquez Brown. There's a lot of options. Yeah, let's go back up at the top there. I think we need to uh, let uh, uh, Cooks fall. Mm-hmm. If no other reason is the fact that we know we can let him fall. Yeah, and, absolutely. And grab him because that's what we seem to chant you know, for him there. So, yeah, a lot of young guys there at wide receiver. You know, Tyler Boyd um, has been, I think, underrated. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy had a really good year last year, and he's kind of a go to guy there for Cincinnati. Do you want to pull up his stats? I can't remember exactly yeah, so what we'll he had done. Quickly here. It definitely on, concerns so. you when they've got T. Higgins there and then they've got uh, Jamar Chase. Though, when you look at it, I want to say and kind of clarify this. T. Higgins had some real dropping issues, and I think that's why they opted to take Jamar Chase. I don't think it was a Tyler Boyd thing, but uh, what did he do last year? So last year he had, uh, in 15 games, 841 yards, not 1,000. Before that, he had back-to-back yards of 1,000. Okay, uh, back-to-back season of 1,000 yards. Last year he ended up with like 841. Not great numbers, but, man, that team was a mess. Mm-hmm. That quarterback issues here and there. Um, A.J. Green's gone. Um, you know, and he's not old. He's still got. He's still a fairly young wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um Pretty solid. I don't know. Um, I don't know if this is taking up too much time. Can we look at his game logs? I'm curious if he was more productive before Burrow got hurt. Did we see a lot of big games in those early weeks or not? Like, I know that's kind of getting into the details, but. So, you know, you look back and, you know, he he definitely seemed to me he had more production before the injuries, you know, because you can see kind of how he dropped off here at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, So I think that he had some pretty good numbers there, production-wise, yardage. Um, we also see that he had you know one game with one target and zero catches and one game with one catch for one yard. Those were towards the end of the season, and I believe that was also right around when he had his injury. Um, almost 
couldn't even really count those as, as full games for him. So although it says he's played 15 games, I might more qualify that as 13 in my mind, and that would change my projections for how he performed. Um, and he did have both his 100-plus yard receiving games with Burrow. Yeah, I think most people look at him as a wide receiver three. Um, but we'll be drafting him as a wide receiver four on the bench. I mean, that's great to have, a, a mm-hmm. guy that for most people will be a starter. Um, I think it adds some you know, stability. It adds a little bit of upside. Uh, it's a PPR league. You're going to have bye weeks. You're going to have injuries. You name it. So I, I like to have that. There are those where we go to the running backs. And, and to me, um, all of those guys, I think, will – We've been wrong so far. And every time we've said, hey, maybe we'll come back around, we haven't been right. Um, <laughs> but I think a couple of those backs could maybe fall to us. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm leaning towards Boyd, but I'm flexible. Um, I say we go running back. And again, just projecting. one. The team t- going right after us has one back. And then the other team after that has two, and then two, and then two, and then one. So when they're going to be picking twice, I imagine we're going to see probably at least four you know, maybe close to six running backs go between now and then. And, and that's good insight. You, you just said something that's key that when you're in the draft, you've got to watch the other players. Know who they have, who they take, and where the quarterback, they need running back. Look at their needs. Don't forget. Don't get so focused on yours you forget that. So I think that's a valid point. Um, yeah. And like I said, this is maybe a bit counterintuitive, but I love what you said. We need depth. There's bye weeks and there's injuries, and that's – I'll I'll let you make the choice here, whatever you want to do. If it's me, I'd take Mike Davis, but I know that's a very philosophically like narrow-minded way for me to go. Yeah, so right now, um, praying and hoping that you guys don't get injured, mm-hmm. obviously, right? Yeah, and we should probably handcuff our guys and make sure they're okay there. But if they don't get injured, Mike Davis is going to be a bi, uh, bi-week fill-in. Um, I kind of think, okay, if I can find a guy out there that's got some more upside – then that's a win-win for me. He's definitely a safe pick, though. And here's mm-hmm. the thing. You are going to have injuries. Um, I like Mike Davis this year. I really do. Mm-hmm. I don't like him the year after. Mm-hmm. For sure. I totally uh, agree sure. with that. Um, but here's the likelihood of it. Most likely, this is a dynasty league, and you're probably not going to keep everybody. Like, I'm the one where you keep five players. So most likely, um, unless the running back that we draft is phenomenal at this point, um, we wouldn't be keeping him anyways. Right? Mike, mm-hmm. Most likely, probably not. So whoever drafts this point is only really going to make it for the season. And based on that, man, he, he adds a lot of stability and safety, and he is a starting running back one at this point. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a, it's a solid pick. It's not fun, it's not exciting, it's mm-hmm. not sexy, but it's safe. It's the pick you take now, and it feels like a waste, but when week six rolls around and one of your top running backs is out for four weeks, suddenly you're just so happy. And I see it happen all the time at drafts where you maximize your drafting, you maximize your drafting, you maximize the upside and the talent and the potential and then suddenly you're like, oh, shoot, what do I do? I had an injury. And I see teams do it all the time. Yeah, every pick you're swinging for the fence. But you know what happens if you swing for the fence every time? You strike out. You strike out. It's going to happen. So. All right, so you think we're good? Go and take Mike Davis then? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Like I said, and, and a lot of that was really determined on how many wide receivers were out there and the yeah. fact that we know we can get Brandon Cooks later on. But uh, I'm looking at a whole mix uh, mismatch there of players taken after us. We are up again. And, you know, yeah, only a few running backs went. Sermon, Ronald Jones, Michael Carter, and uh, Melvin Gordon. So there's still a few options, not a whole lot there. Okay, but. so Boyd didn't go. Mm-hmm. We just talked about how valuable he'd be. I think we got to grab him right now. Absolutely. Let's just go grab Boyd. He's at the top there. You already passed him. Did I? Oh, he's at the very top. Very top. There, go. there we go. So then we also locked up our wide receiver and come back around. We've still got another safe option in Brandon Cooks. And so we can look a lot of different places, including, you know, it's probably time for us to, to take a peek back at quarterback. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Let's check it out and see here. So you get to Sean Watson out there, Matthew Stafford, Trey Lance. Uh, you name it. There's a lot of guys. Baker Mayfield. Uh Tom Brady, I think he could have another decent year for one year, but uh, uh, let me think. Is there anybody that just strikes you at this point? Um, I see two options. Um, one's Ryan Tannehill, and the other's Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill was a top twelve fantasy tight end last or fantasy quarterback last season, and he gained Julio Jones. Mm-hmm. You've got to imagine that he's going to be able to do it again. And the thing I love about him is his kind of tendency for big games. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they ran that, but it's fun, and I'm perfectly okay, you know, making moves to replace him on certain weeks if need be um but if Deshaun Watson plays he's a great pick I don't feel good enough to take him at this point so if we take a QB for me it's Tannehill what do you think so how many quarterbacks are gone right now oh that's great let's do a count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve top twelve so everybody's got a quarterback except for us I believe according to what I'm seeing there Uh, I believe one team has two so there's a team that doesn't have a quarterback that's us 
Oh, it's us. I'm dumb. That math works out great. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so I think everybody's got a quarterback at this point. Um, they might grab somebody. Somebody might make a chance for for him. But uh, I have a feeling. Once again, that's why we do the mock drafts. That they're probably not going to take another quarterback quite yet. Okay. So we could still get one of those guys, but we could probably get him in a round or two later. Mm-hmm. Not too much later, but I think one more round. Let's see who's out there in other positions. All right. So going back to wide receiver, there's a few options there. Does anyone stand out to you? You know, Brandon Cooks is a guy that's overlooked, but we see how far he's been falling. I think we could let him fall farther. Any running backs or tight ends? Yeah, so then we hop back to the running backs. We could go, you know, Hines is that PPR guy, or Tony Pollard is our handcuff option there. Do um, you see anything you like in particular? Well, you got Daryl Henderson. Mm-hmm. He's a one-year guy, but uh, here's the other thing you have to remember, trade bait. Mm-hmm. Trade and most bait. leagues you can trade, and all of a sudden now we got Henderson because Cam Akers is out, and now you've got Mike Davis. We might have four-star running backs, and we can leverage that later on. Um, it's hard to believe that this guy, who's probably projected to be the starter at this point, is still out there this far in the draft. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. He's still just 23 years old. And yeah. we talked about, I pointed out when we when we did talk about him in one of our recent videos, like there was a six-game span where he was like a top, he was like an RB1, RB2, almost kind of in that middle range between the two. Like he had huge upside yeah. in a team that has a phenomenal defense. I'm going to call the Rams the best defense in the league. And they've you know got a good offensive line and they're willing to run the ball. It's almost crazy to me that he's still there. I think he's a great pick at this point, simply based on the fact that I'm a guy who I will make a trade every season in every league that I'm in. It's just who I am. So here's another thing I want to do too is um, by putting him on your bench, you're keeping him off another team's bench. Mm-hmm. There's probably a team out there right now that's looking at this, thinking, you know what, Henderson's out there. He'll fall to me and I can wait. Mm-hmm. I'd love to grab this guy because now it's going to improve my team and my depth, but it's going to give them a major issue. So there's other factors in just improving your roster. I, I think we got to take him. Let's do it. Let's take him. And again, the last thing again that I would say there is we're doing this because there's no player that I would keep over the players I've already drafted. Yep. That's why we're doing this. And then again, I love to package. The season comes around at the end of the year. I'll take three or four of my bench running backs and trade them away to some desperate fool who will give me an elite wide receiver or just slightly upgrade another position. Love to do that in Dynasty. But uh, there is Daryl Henderson, and our team's really come together now. Love our depth at running back. That makes me feel very confident because I remember one year you had Le'Veon Bell and Jamal Charles, and everyone thought you were set, and then they both got hurt. So it really yeah. can happen. So, so here's what happened. Uh, I was wrong, and these guys, which I think is a mistake, they took running back or quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, Watson went, Stafford went, Lance went, um, which I think was a mistake on their part. But mm-hmm. here's another mistake that they made. Now we've got to grab a quarterback because we cannot risk getting stuck with garbage there. Yep. You don't have to have a great quarterback to win, but you need to have a decent quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, and they took quarterbacks, but you know who they didn't take? Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> well, let's just grab them, right? Like that. I think we have to at this point. Do you agree? I, I'm maybe I'm an idiot, but there's Tom Brady is out there, and you know Matt Ryan. There's still it's weird. There's still options. I say we take him. I agree with you. But if you wanted to gamble for for a player you felt you really wanted, if there were another guy that you felt I cannot afford to risk it on him, I would I would say you could, but I don't think it's worth it. So here's what, uh, I hate drafting in leagues with people that haven't played a lot of fantasy football. They're unpredictable. Um, I did this before. I've, I've rolled the dice many times like this in quarterbacks, and it's almost always done well for me, except for one year I got bit hard. And the reason why, I was drafting with a bunch of people in a church league who mm-hmm. don't play fantasy football, and uh, instead of following your typical, like, don't waste a bench spot on a quarterback, they're grabbing them left and right. I rolled the dice, and I, I, I ended up bad. So um, that's always in the back of my mind is that fear. Well, and what are the odds that these guys end up in free agency after week one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're going to get desperate for Yeah, who'd you spots. have as a quarterback last year? Uh, Justin Herbert, who was my week one pickup. Like, or, well, between weeks one and week two, I picked him up, so I was going to get the start. I just threw him out there as a gamble because I made the mistake of not having a quarterback set in my roster, and it paid off. Heck, it's really paid off. Set the record for most rookie passing touchdowns by four. I mean, he was insane last year, and... You know what? It always feels like there's a guy like that. Lamar, who's a second-year stud, or Pat, who comes out. He was a ninth-round pick. Or Carson Wentz, who had that awesome second year. So it's just, I don't know. I'm not really worried about it. Yeah, I think, you know, going back to quarterbacks, uh, I want to go to Tanny Hill, and here's why. I think he's underrated. You talked about where he was last year in scoring, but mm-hmm. we're not just saying this because he's done well. If you follow our videos and you've been on our site, when he was playing for Miami, we came out and said, this guy is very underrated. Mm-hmm. When he went there and people talked to Marcus Mariota, we said, no, how long before he loses his job to Tannehill? I've liked this guy for a while. I think he's very underrated. 
All right, so let's go Ryan Tannehill. I love that. I think he could, you know, his upside is that he's the top four fantasy option. He really does have that upside. But uh, now we've locked down our quarterback. We've got depth at both wide receiver and running back. What are we targeting now? We've got four picks left. Do we target a defense or a kicker? Okay, so normally this is where I just begin to fill my bench with just, you know, running backs and wide receivers uh, depth. But um, I don't think anybody strikes. We should look and just to make sure, but I don't think anybody just jumps out at me like, yeah, I really love that guy. And this is where I kind of like to sneak in there and beat the run for defense and for kicker. Don't, you know, don't overpay for them, but don't undervalue how important they are. I have won leagues with mediocre players, but I've had a really good quarterback, really good defense, and really good kicker, and they've carried me at times. So um, I kind of want to go that direction. Mm -hmm. Um. So again, look to the wide receivers there. No one stands out. Definitely no one at tight end at this point. We've got our handcuff running back. I don't necessarily think that's that important. Well, normally we say we have to handcuff because of injuries. You can't risk that. Mm -hmm. But we have two starters essentially on our bench right now, so I don't think we need to handcuff. And a running back like Zeke has been so healthy over his career. It's I would honestly at the draft, like I'd be looking around like, I dare you to take my backup so you can watch him sit on your bench and do nothing for six weeks until you finally drop him. Like I... It's not a concern for him. Um, here's a question. Kicker defense. What do you lean? Um, I think I lean towards kicker a little bit. Um, I love Justin Tucker. This dude is ice in his veins. He's mm -hmm. probably, um, just my opinion, the best kicker ever. I love Adam Vinatieri, other guys out there have been great. But this guy, in the conditions he kicks, he's so clutch, strong leg, you name it. I love Justin Tucker. I love the offense he's in. But we can look at defense and just see. Um, you know, Washington is a young, upcoming defense. I like the Buccaneers. Um, I think I like them a little bit better than Washington. I don't think they're as talented, but I love defense that also has a good offense because a good mm -hmm. offense puts points on the board and makes the opposing team have to throw the ball, and when you do that, it creates turnovers. So uh, there's a couple defenses. Pittsburgh's talented. You talked about the Rams. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be happy with any one of those, but to me, Justin Tucker still stands out as the best kicker. What do you think? Yeah, I lean towards defense, and I tell you why. I think people are more comfortable with defenses than they are with kickers. If you're in a semi-casual league, if you take a defense, you are you can get secure with the number one guy, and people almost don't even worry about who their kicker is. They just kind of throw a guy out there and don't think too much about it. And I love the Rams' defense. They were, I believe, they were number one in fantasy points last season amongst defenses, and they upgraded quarterback. So that's for me, a recipe to have just a dominant defense. But if we went kicker, you're totally right to say that we got to go Tucker. So. so here's what I think. Um, I prefer some of the defense over Rams, but I'll let you have the Rams. That's fine because we're, you know, partnershipping here. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now they're kind of going off the board. It's about the fourth or fifth defense going off typically in most leagues. Mm -hmm. um, Tucker's number one guy. So I think we could take Tucker and come back around and get our defense. Absolutely. But we definitely won't be able to do it the other way, I believe. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, start that run on kickers. Hopefully everyone will panic. Um, or maybe not, who knows. But um, curious to see. No defenses have gone. So it looks like at this point, we get both of them. Do you want to take the defense now, or you feel like we can wait? Well, let's look at the wide receivers and running backs and see. I think we should take that defense. Because um, to me, what happened is all these guys fall in that same sort of tier. And if there's mm -hmm. 10 guys in the same tier, it doesn't really matter. Then I'll go for another position. So Yeah, not seen any wideouts that stand out there. There are some guys to note, like Russell Gage moves into the wide receiver two role like mm -hmm. that. Parker's there, but there's you know a lot going on with that Miami team. Nobody that stands out, right? There are okay options. Yeah, Mario Rogers, I like him. Uh, Mario Rogers is actually a guy that I like in dynasty leagues, not this year, but the year after. Some of you may want to throw on your bench and see how he develops, but um, but I think he'll be there, come back around. How about running backs? Um, Gus Edwards is actually not bad. Not He's bad, been very yeah. popular, but just needs the, the real role there. I like Alexander Madison Vikings because uh, Delvin Cook is, is, is very good, but he's also injury prone. Mm -hmm. But he's another guy I don't think you need to have. Uh, how about tight ends? I mean, I feel pretty good about Hawkinson. Is there any young tight ends out there that... You know, Higby, he just earned the role as the number one tight end in that offense. So, you know, Gronkowski is still out there. Gerald Everett moves into the Seattle offense. Yeah. You know, maybe we were wrong to take TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. At this point, if I could have said that, if you would have told me at this point I'd get to take my pick between Gronk or Gerald Everett or Tyler Higby, I would have been pretty darn happy with it. Or Zach Ertz, who, by the way, there's still speculation he could get traded, mm -hmm. and then he becomes another one tight end again, another team possibly. So. Right, you know, for maybe like Buffalo or something. But yeah. so yeah, maybe that was the wrong pick. That very well could have well, been. Once again, it's why we do this. Um, I, you know, I want to go with the defense. We'll let you pick who you got, who you want there. So Okay, I'm going to go with the Rams. Like I said, they were already number one in fantasy last year as far as I can remember, and then you upgrade at quarterback. 
huge upside there. I think they will solidify themselves as the clear number one fantasy defense this year. And look at that. A couple defenses starting to go after us, so we took them at just the right time. So we got what we want, a kicker and defense. So here's where I'm at. This is a dynasty league. Our last two picks bench. I am pretty much, because I feel like we have a lot of solid um, bench at this point, mm -hmm. I want upside. Yep. That's what I want. And then here's the other thing I do is I put guys on my bench using the last couple of picks with a lot of upside, and then I'm constantly making moves. Don't make the mistake like a lot of teams where you draft, and then you're like, I got a good team, and you don't pay attention for a couple of weeks because you drafted in the middle of August. Um, always look to upgrade your bench. Always. Mm -hmm. So let's see who's out there. Who's well, got the most upside? And I'd have to agree with what you had said about maybe going to Mari Rogers at wide out. I looked at the running backs and didn't see anyone that really stood out to me, but maybe you want to look again. Uh, let's look again real quickly there, but I, I like Amari Rogers. We actually talked about him in a video recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jamal, let's see. I'm looking at Tree Collins. Yeah, there's nobody that really pops out. Um, Penny, we talked about Penny, Marlon Mack. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, uh, you know, Ahmed, could he, you know, could he be the guy there? It's, mm -hmm. But I don't think any of those guys carry the upside that, let's say, um, Rodgers does. The, the, the one running back with upside is the Ramondre Stevenson uh, for, the, for the Patriots there. It's a crowded backfield, but, you know, you stash him on your bench and maybe he surprises you, like Jonas Gray just has that crazy four-touchdown yeah. week or something. Um, I don't know. I definitely think Amari Rodgers is the right pick. Yeah, I like that guy. All right. We're, again, coming around to our last pick. We'll see who is out there, but uh, we got a kicker on our defense. Again, happy we did that. We're all set, and... Now we're looking now just to kind of solidify one more high upside guy. What? How many wide receivers and how many running backs do we have? We got one, two, three. Oh, I can't even see. One, two, three, four, five wideouts and four running backs. So maybe a, a running back might be good. Or yeah, you know, I mean, we have to start three wide receivers in this league, right? That's how it mm -hmm. is. So I mean, uh, two. So I think you're gonna always lean towards maybe an extra wide receiver on your bench. I guess we have to ask ourselves is where do we have. Um, the most confidence. You have mm -hmm. more confidence in our wide receivers, our running backs, because that will kind of determine, I think, who we throw on the bench. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of confidence in both, but I think that, and you know, and none of these guys here are going to be, in my mind, none of these guys are going to play much of a role at this point. They are very likely to just be dropped, so I'm going to shoot for high upside. Um, so I don't, for me, it doesn't even necessarily matter what position it is, if I'm being totally honest. What about, like, just best talent available, like Nico Collins, you know? Yeah, I, I like Nico Collins, actually. He's another guy that I previewed in my video. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, I'm, I'm huge. I think he's got a lot of upside there. So I'd love to take a guy like that and just see. Um, and it's crazy to see how many guys are still out there. What about um, Sammy Watkins, who's going to be one of the top two receivers there in Baltimore? Yeah, and, you know, he's a guy that one week will be spectacular, and you'll think, this is it, and you'll start him, and he'll kill you. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that or instability. <laughs> <laughs> the instant. Or John Brown, who just is with the Raiders now. Yes. He could very well be the wideout one. He's actually a sneaky guy there that's very underrated. But once again, i got to go back to my thoughts on this. Is This is a dynasty league. Man, I want upside. I want that next stud. Uh, I'm always hoping now with these picks that you get the next Jerry Rice mm -hmm. that everybody overlooked. You know, I This is going to be weird, but do we take a tight end? Nobody out there, I mean... Is exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I think that Gronkowski is going to be decent. I think he have a better year this year than he did last year because you know uh, another year back after being uh, out for a year. Um, but nobody just strikes me, and, and I really want to fall back on like who's got the most potential, and the most upside at this point. And um, I don't, I don't see a tight. You don't end see any of those guys. But somebody you like there that you're interested in. I think that you know Gerald Everett for Seattle has the potential to suddenly emerge as a top five tight end, and that is again. It, this comes purely off of the fact that we're at the end of the draft and we're drafting for upside. He could very well bust as well. And I just didn't see anyone else that I felt like we needed at another position. So it maybe it comes from lack of talent at other spots. It could be. Uh, I look at everybody who's been in the league a few years. I mean, the guy that they said has got potential, but they let him go for a reason. Yeah, he doesn't excite me. Um, I, I, you mentioned Nico Collins, and, and yeah. I like the guy. Mm -hmm. um, I did a video on him, and I think he's got pretend, uh, tremendous upside. Um, but, uh, you know, I could be wrong um, about him. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember years ago I, I did this. A uh, uh, couple guys, I mean, I'm, I'm going to age myself. I'm getting old, but back in the night when I first started playing, I did it with Isaiah, or um, Isaac Bruce, and I also did it with Anquan Bolden. And are uh, old. Yes, I am getting old. Um, but these guys were amazing for me in Dynasty Leagues, and I got them for everybody else. So it's always in the back of my mind, and maybe that's skewing my pick now. But, mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, I just, Gerald Everett, to me, um, 
he might be a guy that's decent, but I do think he's got a limited ceiling. He's been in the league for a few years. I think that, you know, he can improve. He's improved greatly. Mm-hmm. And I want a guy that, you know, could potentially be amazing. But I'll, I'll let you make the pick. Here's what I'm thinking. The last pick in your draft is almost always released. At some point, you drop him for another need that you have. Is that not correct? Usually, yeah. Now, normally, you have a bigger bench than we have. Normally, you do have a bigger bench than we have, so that, that is certainly true. So when I look at this position, I say we take a guy who we can determine in the first two or three weeks if they have value. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? I want to know so I'm not wasting a bench spot on a guy like Nico Collins who probably won't get drafted and will probably be available for pickup in a few weeks. What if we go Everett and after the first two weeks, you know what you've got with him? That's, That's your, your call. Pick. I'm going to leave that on. No, you. it's your want. pick. All right, well, I'm going to do it then. I like that. I'm going to go for we it. We want to hear your thoughts on this, by the way. What would you do? We do. Exactly. I want to hear, correct our every single pick, because at least then someone's commenting on the video. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to go for it again. I just want to know what we've got with him in the first few weeks and lock up a, a potential stud there. And again, that comes back to trade bait. Don't you love the idea that possibly, you know, you've got two stud tight ends and then you can get rid of one of those guys to upgrade at another position. I'll even hopefully, I don't know if it'll allow me to, but slide that out of the way. And we can look at our roster here. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I like our roster. You know, it's hard to project because it is a dynasty league, so I have to keep that in the back of my mind. And normal, most dynasty leagues, you're carrying over from year to year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel good. I feel like we've got enough talent right now to be competitive first year. I think we have some upside there, definitely with guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we have a solid bench. And I think that's the thing that you can't overlook. Mm-hmm. Um, in dynasty leagues, you want to grab these young players, but sometimes you get so young, you have so many risky players that it, it's going to hurt you eventually. Mm-hmm. And we have guys on our bench that aren't exciting, but they're solid. Yeah. And going back to what you had said before, those are the guys on your bench you're probably not going to carry over anyways because in most leagues, you know, in dynasty leagues, you keep maybe four or five guys. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's great to have that young player on your bench, but you're probably not going to keep them anyways. So based on that, I think we have a very solid team. Yeah, and you know, I only see two other teams that have better running back situations than us. I would say Kamara and Aaron Jones, though it's more of a short term with Aaron Jones. You could argue they're better than our running back situation. And then McCaffrey, Antonio Gibson, and Joe Mixon, you could argue they are. And possibly Barkley and Najee Harris, that's another great one. In fact, actually, I'd probably say they almost definitely are because they have Eckler as their three and Robinson and ETN. So they really, you know, secured three backfields of solid play. But, um, But to be up there, and then when you look at those teams, like the team with Barkley and Harris, their top wide is Cooper Cup. We don't have that weakness that they have. Or like when you see Evans and Deontay Johnson for the McCaffrey and Gibson backfield, or the top wide receiver for Kamara and Aaron Jones, this team is T. Higgins and Jerry Judy and, and Odell Beckham. Like that's their... Yeah. So we don't necessarily stand out in any area, but we don't have any weaknesses. Yeah, you look at team one there, I like the running backs. I like McCaffrey, Mixon's got upside, Gibson's solid there, but you know, you... You fall off. Deontay Johnson's looked potential, but this is a guy who got sat last year because of drops, so I think there's a big drop-off. The last team, the 12 team, um, they really went late on their running backs, and they've got two guys that um, may not even be starters at this point. Yeah, um, Javante Williams and Ronald Jones very likely sit on the bench at some point. Yeah, they went after Mahomes. I know that's exciting. They went after Pitts, but um, I'll tell you what, when I look at the teams, I, I like where we're at. Mm-hmm. I think we got enough to build in the future. I'm going to have to be competitive right now. We have stability in there and possibly trade bait. I think this would play out really well in an actual league. I want to go back in the, the end of this year with these videos we've done mock drafts and see kind of how we would have done. Yeah, absolutely. There's one other team in this draft I want to point out. I kind of like Team 11. Nick Chubb and Miles Gaskins, that's okay. How about Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay? Man, they are set there. Yeah, that, that's a good team. That's a good team. A um, little down in the, uh, like, Gaskin's probably not great because in Dynasty and uh, and Chubb lose a little value in PPRs. But, and then uh, they're weak at tight end and they're weak at quarterback. And so they've got issues, but I love that wideout yeah, core there. Yeah, they've got great wideouts. And that's the thing that I always want to say to everybody. If you are smart and you are aggressive and you are making moves, your fantasy roster is almost completely different three or four years from now. So this idea of I'm going to draft a guy and he's going to be a stud for me for a decade, not very likely. Yeah. And in fact, we even played in a league where there was a penalty for keeping a guy. It was an auction league, and every year you kept him after year three. You paid more for him. I love that. It kept things rotating and kept things moving and and interesting. But love this roster. Super well-rounded. Huge upside. But also, I just I feel safe about it. You know what I mean? I feel like this is a team that could win now and could win two, three years from now. Um, Anything else you want to add there? You want to just close this out? Yeah, thanks for joining us. Hey, help us out. 
a subscribe, like, leave a comment, you name it. Excited to get back to doing videos after taking that year off. Uh, excited to really help you guys this fall and get together. It's good to have football back. Once again, appreciate you so much. God bless and take care.